assign videos to your students, find out how much they've watched and ask them questions while you're doing it. Let's dive into it with another flipped classroom tutorial. In today's video, we'll be looking at Edpuzzle. Now, Edpuzzle is an amazing platform that is going to enable you to flip your teaching. Now, what is flipped teaching? Well, flipped teaching is where the bulk of the information is shared via videos or via an online way of delivery. Now, Edpuzzle enables you to do that by taking video from various platforms, including YouTube, and adding questions to that. So you're basically turning the consumption of these videos into an active activity. So let's have a look at the platform and some of the things that are possible within Edpuzzle. Now here on the website, first of all, you'll have to sign up for an account. Now when you're signing up for the first time, you'll have to decide if you're going to sign up with a student account or a teacher account. So here when I click on sign up, you'll see I need to select I'm a teacher or I'm a student and I'm going to click on I'm a teacher. Once you've done that, you're navigating to the next page and this is where you can now sign in with Google. Now, if you already have a Google account or a school account, just click on that button and everything is automated. If you do not have a Google account, you can click on sign up with Edpuzzle and then just fill out the information and you'll be ready to get started in no time. If you already have your account, go ahead and click on login. And you can again use the sign in with Google button to get signed in. Once signed up and logged into the Edpuzzle platform, this will be the page that you see first. Now we're going to be looking at some of the different features of this platform, but let's start with the main one and that is creating lesson content. So here, as you can see, I can click on this add content button. And this will enable me to either create a video with questions, upload a video that is already on my device, start a new student project or create a folder. I'm going to start by creating a video. Now, when I click on create a video, I'm brought into the search results. Now, these are just pulled in from the Edpuzzle community or I can click on YouTube and then YouTube pulls up a number of different search results. I can search for content by typing in a search term or a keyword that I'm looking for, or I could just take a YouTube video and then pop that URL of the video into this search box. Let's go ahead and find some information about the planets. So there we go, we're going to type in planets. It is doing a search. It can either search the Edpuzzle community. These are lessons that already have questions attached to them and teachers have worked on these, or we can search YouTube. Now having searched for the word planets, I found this video here, Solar System 101 by National Geographic. So I'm going to click on this. I can now preview this video and I can play it. Now as I preview this video, I can also scroll down and I can see that there are more than 4,000 versions of this video. That means students and teachers have already created their own questions linked to this video. Now I could click on these and then find out exactly what sort of questions have been asked, save a lot of time during my lesson planning. However, I want to start from scratch and I want to create my own lesson. So on the right hand side here, you will see that I can click on edit. As soon as I click on edit, I go into that video editor. This is where you can start adding content. So here I can first of all cut my video. This is great for when you have those really long videos, you need to shorten them, or maybe you just want to cut out a section. So let's say we want to cut out 19 seconds in, we're going to add a cut, and then we're going to cut out this entire middle section and jump ahead to where they talk about Mercury. Now my video will start off right here at the beginning. And then as you can see, when I press play, the video Our starts solar playing is one of over five no and once it gets to that cut dust collapsed resulting in a solar nebula a swirling disk venus is the hottest planet with temperature it jumps and skips ahead so this is brilliant for when you're trying to really focus on a single element or a single section within a longer video now here at the top, I have two more options. I have the voiceover option and the questions option. Now voiceover will only work with your own videos. So YouTube's terms of services do not allow you to reuse this content and add your own voiceovers, as you can see here from this notice. But if you're uploading your own video material, then you can still use that voiceover functionality. The questions, this is where the real power of Edpuzzle shines because you can add questions at certain points during the video 
and then your students have to answer these questions and you get all that information automatically sent to you as a teacher. So let's add a first question. We're talking about Venus here. Temperatures of up to 867 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, let's add a multiple choice question. We're going to add a question and then the two options are yes and no. Now, don't forget, you do need to mark which of these two is the correct answer. So I'm going to just tick this as the correct answer. And then you can always add more answer choices. Now, I'm not add adding any more answer choices at the moment. So let's go ahead and click on save. It will be visually marked here on the timeline that there is a question. As you can see, it automatically pauses the video and then students have to answer this question. I can now click on continue. Due to an atmosphere of carbon dioxide and extensive lava flow. Let's say I want to add another question, but this time it's an open-ended question. I can click on open-ended question. So I'm going to type my question here. What do you think are the main reasons for these scorching temperatures? And then we can save this. Once you've clicked on save, question is added to the video and then your students will have to fill this out. Let's say that a couple minutes in, I want to add a bit more information. The video is not quite focusing on what I want to focus on in my lesson. Well, I can add a note. So when I click on note, I can now add a written note as well as I can click on this microphone down here and record an audio note. So let's just add a note. Please make sure you take a note of this information. There we go. And I can also add a voice note. And it's now recording my voice note and I would like the students to really pay attention to the next few seconds because some very important information is going to be shared here. Click on stop when you're ready. You can preview this here. Let's click on this. And it's now recording my voice note and I would like the students to really pay attention. Perfect, we're going to leave both the text and the voice note and click on save. Now, if you ever need to add more than just a written note or a voice note, you can also add in images and external links or link out to other websites. Now, once everything is set up, you have a nice overview here on the left hand side. You can see I have a multiple choice question at 26 seconds, 29 seconds in an open ended question and then one minute and a bit a note. OK, I'm ready. I'm happy with the video. I'm going to click on finish. So in the top corner, you can see finish. We're going to click on that. Now here we can click on share preview and this will now create or generate a link that previews what this will look like, including those questions. So let's go ahead and copy this link and open it in a separate tab. Here we have our video at the top. We have our questions at the bottom. And as we get to those questions, you will see that the video automatically pauses. There we go. It pauses. I now have to answer this so I can answer yes or no. Let's click yes and submit the answer. That was wrong. It shows me the correct answer and then I can continue. Now I can still click on skip and that's because I haven't changed that setting in the main area. I'll show you in a minute how that's done. So we're going to now close this. This video is ready to be assigned to students. So let's have a look at how we can add our students to our Edpuzzle account. So here on the content, I have that video that I've been working on, but we also have the button My Classes. Let's go ahead and create our first class. Now we're going to click on Add New Class. You can also use Google Classroom. I'll look at that in depth in another video, but for now, let's just create it manually. We're going to click on Add New Class and give this a title, Video Demo of Edpuzzle. And there we go. Grade levels, you can change all these things. Now we can have the classic class type or an open class type. Classic means that everybody has their own account and then they join your class. And if you use the open type, then your students do not need a login. They don't have to sign up for an account. They just need that class code and they can join. Now I'm going to just click on classic and create my class. Okay, time to invite some students. Now at the top, you will see we have our class options and an invite students button. So let's go ahead and click on that. First things first, you're going to need to double check that you have consent because you are not using the open class type. You're going to be giving them accounts. You're going to be giving them access. So here you need to double check that you have consent. We're going to click on continue. And then here we have our class code. This code can be shared via email or you can copy the link. So let's go ahead and copy this link. 
I'm going to open up another demo account and join as a student. Here in my demo account, this is my student account, I'm going to click on that link and it immediately says, please sign up for an account. I'm going to sign in with Google and it automatically asks me if I want to join this class. I'm going to click on join class and I am now a student in that class. Let's return to our teacher account. Here in our teacher account, as I close this window, you will see that I have my demo class here on the left hand side. I can always click on the plus icon to create more classes. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to look at my standard class and I can find all my class members by clicking on the class member tab. Here we have the teacher and here we have that student demo account that has joined. I can always click on the three dots can edit the name, reset their password, or remove them from the class altogether. I can also lock this classroom. In other words, nobody else can join. So if you are now trying to use the code you saw on screen, well, when that classroom is locked, then you will not be able to join this classroom. Let's go ahead and unlock the classroom for now, and let's assign this video to our students. Let's go back to content. Let's find the video I've just created with those three questions, if you remember, the multiple choice, open-ended, and that note, and we're going to assign this to our students. Let's select our class and assign it to all. Now, if you do have a task for some students and not all students, then you can always assign it manually and select the students. I'm going to assign it to all, start date today, due date. We can also turn on the preventing skipping, that means that they won't be able to skip ahead in the video. So I do want them to really watch everything shared in that video. And I can turn on closed captions. Now I'm not going to turn on closed captions. I am going to prevent skipping and I'm going to assign it. So let's go ahead and click on assign. All done. We can always preview that video in our student mode. And here at the bottom, we get all the information about how much has been watched. So you can see Student 1 has watched 0% of this video. They do not have a grade because it was not a graded assignment. And when did they last watch it? Well, because they watched 0%, it says never. Have they turned in the assignment? Not yet. You can always click on those three dots. I can always reset their progress or unassign it and then they don't have to complete it. Now, let's jump back into our student account and let's have a look at what our student sees. So here in my student account, you will see that in this tab of assignments, they have one assignment. So let's go ahead and click on it. It opens up, we can start watching this. Now I am going to mute this. And as you can see, the video starts playing. Once it gets to the point where we have a question, the video will automatically pause. And then me as a student, I have to respond to that question. So let's go ahead and see if that works. We're going to wait for the question to show up talks about the temperature and then the video pauses and I get a question. Now I get another question. This is an open-ended question that's now going to show up. And there we go. We're going to just type our answer, click on submit, and then this is sent off to our teacher. As soon as I click on continue, the video continues and let's try and skip ahead. So I'm going to try and skip ahead. And as you can see, because this was ticked, I cannot skip ahead. To the next question. I have to watch the entire video and then once I reach that final point then I can hand this in and submit it to my teacher. So as you scroll down you will see that we're getting much closer to that last question. Now it does give us a little reminder on the right hand side watch the whole video to turn in this assignment and so we're going to complete watching this video. Now, as I'm watching this my teacher will see an updated of how much has been watched and also when it was last watched. So the teacher sees that this video is still actively being watched and then as I watch more of the video, the teacher will see a much greater percentage. Now again, as with the video, the voice note cannot be skipped, so they have to listen to this and then they can continue. As they continue watching the video, the teacher is informed that they are watching more and more of the video and they will see that percentage increase. So here you can see the teacher sees that already 40% of the video has been watched and therefore our student is doing everything they're supposed to do. And there we go, we've now reached the end of the video. It automatically stops and it allows me to click on show results. So when I click on that, I see the results of my questions. Now, it says 100% of the video completed and one out of two correct responses. That's just because it's a still to be graded because it was an open-ended question. So you can see to be graded. 
I've completed this video. So let's go ahead and close this. We can go back to our class and here you will see it's now under completed. So it automatically turns this in and my teacher will also see that I have completed this assignment. So here in my teacher's view, you will see that the student has completed 100%. It's automatically been turned in and it automatically adds the date and timestamp of when this was added. Now, in addition to creating your own videos, you can also, during sign up, select your school. And when you select your school, well, then you will see that there is an added link here. EduFlip is my school. And this will show all the video content created by other teachers at your school. In other words, you can share lessons, you can use each other's lessons, and you can reuse them for your own students. So here you can always do a search within your school and everything you create will be visible to other teachers. You can also navigate to curriculum and then this will give you a chance to find some of the curated content created by Edpuzzle. Now, in addition to creating videos, sharing these with your students, assigning them, getting that feedback, you can also find the gradebook at the top. Now, this gradebook will show you what has been assigned, when this was assigned, which student it was assigned to, and also how long they have spent watching this content. So this gives you a very clean overview of every single task and every single student and also how long they've spent on this content. Now I hope you found this helpful. If you did, make sure to like this video, share it out and subscribe to the channel. In the meantime, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.